Today, we pick our text from Job chapter 1, verse 1 to 6. Um, I will read from uh, NIV. And this is what the Bible says. In the land of Uz, there lived a man whose name was Job. This man was blameless, upright, he feared God, and shunned evil. He had seven sons and three daughters, and he owned 7,000 sheep, 3,000 camel, 500 yoke of oxen, and 500 donkeys, and had a large number of servants. He was the greatest man among all the people of the East. His sons used to take turns holding feasts in their homes, and uh, they would invite their three sisters to eat and drink with them. When a period of uh, feasting had run its course, Job would send and have them purified. Early in the morning, he would sacrifice a burnt offering for each of them, thinking, perhaps my children have sinned and cast God in their hearts. This was Job's regular custom. Praise the name of the living God. I want us to pick three very important lessons in uh, this passage of scripture. Lessons that are going to help us in our walk of faith as it relates to our relationship with God. Now, Job the Bible says he was one of the greatest of his time for several reasons. So, in uh, and for the purposes of our study today, I want us to look at four things. Number one, where he lived and what it means. Who Job was, what he possessed, and why he was later attacked or why he was prone to the attacks. Praise the name of the living God. So, where Job lived, the Bible says Job lived in a, a region called Uz. A region called Uz. From Hebrew uh, word, uh, this place called Uz means a place of refuge. So, Job lived in a place called a place of refuge because Uz in Hebrew uh, is a Hebrew word which means literally place of refuge. It's actually a place of protection, we may say. So Job lived in a region or in an area or in a place where he was protected because refuge actually is a place of protection. We can say that refuge is a place of security. We can say that refuge is a place of supply. It is a place of safety or it's a place of strength. It is a place where you cannot be touched. It's a place where your security is guaranteed. Now, Proverbs 18 verses 10 says this. I'll read from the Message Bible. It says, God's name is a place of protection. God's name is a place of... Remember, Job lived in a place of refuge. Job lived in a place of protection. And the Bible tells us that God's name is a place of protection. Good people run there and be safe. But look at verses 11 because it will help us to understand one or two things about Job. It says that, Rich or the rich think their wealth protects them. They imagine themselves self behind it. It says, pride first, then they crush, but humility is a precursor to honor. So, Job lives in a place of protection. He lives in a place of refuge, a place of security, safety, supply, and strength. But there is always a temptation. There is always a temptation 
And that's one of the things we're going to look at when our wealth becomes our protection. When the things we have received from God begin to become our source of protection or when we begin to hide behind the things we have received from God. Now, in Amplified Version, the same, same scripture says this, The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The consistently righteous man, the upright, and the, the, and the one in right standing with God, run into it and is safe because it is a high above evil. It's a place above evil. And that person is strong or is strengthened. But verses 11 says, the rich man's wealth in his, sorry, I said, the rich man's wealth is his strong city. You see that? The rich man's wealth is his strong city. And as a high protecting wall in his own imagination and conceit. Then it says, haughtiness comes before disaster, but humility before honor. What is amplified version telling us? It says, uh, listen, you can be in a place of protection, like Job was in a place of protection, but later we will see Job trying to use what he has to bring about protection concerning his own children. And I said, in a place of protection or in a place where God is protecting you, why would you want to offer sacrifices to God to protect you? Unless you are thinking that you can use what God has given you to protect you. Because, because, because Job is in a place of protection. So he doesn't need to do anything to be protected because he's protected. But later we see Job giving sacrifices to God in the name that his children may have sinned against God or cast God in their hearts, so he would offer sacrifices to God in order that God may protect his children when actually he is in a place of protection. Praise the name of the living God. So Job lived in a place of protection, but later we see him trying to find a way to protect his children even though he is in a place where God is his protection. Praise the name of the living God. So, where Job lived? A place of protection. So, who is Job? Who was he? The Bible says he was a blameless man, meaning he's a man who walked in the truth of the word. Number two, the Bible says he was an upright person, meaning he had a right standing with God. He's a man with a right standing with God. He was righteous in the sight of God. But number three, he feared God, meaning Job is a man who honored God in everything that he was and in everything that he had. Because everything that we have, we have received from the Lord. And Job honored God with everything that he was and everything that he had. That is who Job was. But number three, what did Job possess? We say Job was a man full of glory, meaning he had everything that he needed for life. He was everything that God created man to be. Job was in a place where he did not know what it meant to lack because man was never created to live in the world of luck. Yesterday we talked about grace, a place of plenty in place of plenty. A place where you party because you have plenty. And like the children of Job, we see them in a season of parting. They are freely parting because they are in a place where they have everything that they need to do, anything that they want. They can afford to do anything they want because they have everything that they needed. So Job was a wealthy man. He was a rich man. He was a prosperous man. He had everything that he needed. 
And this is a place where God wants us to come. This is a place where God is inviting us to come. A place where we have everything that we need. A place where we become everything that God created us to, to become. And is it possible to have everything and to become everything? Yes, it is possible because with God, all things are possible. It is possible that God can bring you, can bring me or bring us to a place where we become everything God created us to become or we have everything that God says we should have or God says we have. Second Peter 1 Peter 1.3 Through his divine power, God has given us everything that we need for life and for godliness. So Job was in that place, a place where he owns and he possesses a place where he does not know what it means to lack, praise the name of the living God. But this is the million dollar question. Why was Job attacked? Even though he was living in a place of safety, even though he was living in a place where God is his protection, even though he is living in a place of supply and strength. In fact, when the enemy comes to attack Job, uh, 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 he tells God, the only reason why Job fears you is because you are his protection. You have protected him in every regard. You have protected him for who he is and you have protected him for everything that he has. So he says Job only fears you because you protected him. Job fears you because you are his protection. If you remove your protection from Job, he will curse you. He will disown you. Right? So the enemy tells God, he only fears you because you protect him, because you are his protection. So why was Job attacked? Praise God. Why was he attacked? We see that Job was a faithful intercessor. He used to intercede for his children. And listen, I believe this is where the enemy saw an open window to attack Job. Job was an intercessor. He had this priestly anointing on him. And the responsibility of anyone with a priestly anointing is to intercede. So Job would intercede for his children one by one every day. He would intercede for them. But listen, Job's intercession and worship was not founded on faith. My belief. Job's intercession and worship was not founded on faith. So what was it founded on? The Bible says uh, Job used to offer sacrifices every day out of fear. He used to worship God out of fear. He used to sacrifice to God out of fear. Praise the name of the living God. He used to think, maybe my children have sinned against God. Maybe my children have cast God in their hearts. So what would he do? He would offer sacrifices out of fear. Praise God. Praise the name of the living God. In fact, we say Job's problem was fear consciousness. Fear consciousness. There are people who have a fear consciousness. Plus, it's even worse if it's a fear consciousness plus sin consciousness. Because he had this fear that there's a possibility that my children are sinning against God by cursing God. So it was a fear consciousness together with sin consciousness. You see? In fact, in Job, I like this. In Job chapter 3, 25, he made this confession himself. He said, what I feared has come upon me. Job lived a life of fear. He was afraid that maybe as a result of something his children were doing could end up bringing him disaster. 
So he would offer sacrifices because he's afraid. Maybe my children are doing something wrong. Maybe my children are not doing something right, you know? And if they're not doing something right, if, you see, this is what the Bible says, that the wages of sin is what? Is death. Sin has a, his sin has consequences, you know? So he's afraid that maybe they will do something wrong and it will come to bring about disaster in the family. So he said, what I feared has come upon me. What I dreaded has happened to me. You see, 2 Timothy chapter 1, 7, the Bible says, God has not given us the spirit of fear. Fear is not of God. Fear is not from God. So where did Job get the fear that something bad could one day happen to him? Job was offering sacrifices to God. Sacrifices of intercession on the foundation of fear. We know that anything we are not doing out of faith is sin. Romans chapter 14, 21. Anything you do, anything we do, if we are not doing it out of faith, it is sin. And where there is sin, the enemy takes advantage. Praise the name of the living God. You will discover, by the way, you will discover that the enemy never attacked who Job was. And as a matter of fact, the enemy will never attack who you are because he knows who you are and he knows he cannot change who you are. He knows you are righteous. He knows you are blameless. He knows you fear God and he cannot change anything about that. So the enemy did not even bother to attack who Job is. But listen, actually, is it in verses 11, the enemy tells God, does Job fear you for nothing? The only reason why Job fears you is because you protected everything you have given to him. He says, just remove your protection from what you have given to him and the man will curse you. And see, that's what the enemy does. He attacks what we have received from God. He knows he cannot change who we are, but he can attack what we have received. And that's why we see the enemy attacking people's careers. He would attack your marriage. He would attack your family. He will attack your business. He will attack your ministry. He will attack your wealth. But he cannot touch who you are. God told the enemy, you can have everything, but don't touch the man for who he is. So why was Job attacked? Job opened a window for the enemy to bring about attack in his life. How did he do that? He did that when he founded his way of worship on a foundation that was not of God. Even though Job was in a place where God was his protection. Listen, we must worship God the way he has prescribed us to worship him. The Bible says true worshipers will worship God in spirit and in truth. And there is no two way about it. We can only worship God the way he has required us to worship him. And like Job, he anticipated bad things to happen. The Bible says, as a man thinketh, so he is. Job was looking forward for a day when tragedy. Job was looking forward for a day when calamity and everything he believed would happen happened to him because he opened that window for the enemy to bring about an attack in his life. Listen, our worship to God must be founded on faith. Listen, we are at a place of protection because the name of God is our protection. But even as God is a protection over us, we must worship God the way he has required us to worship him. We can only worship God the way he has required us to worship him. 
worship God out of faith. In faith and through faith, we cannot offer sacrifices to God because we are afraid if we don't do that, something will happen. I see a lot of people who their walk of faith is founded on fear and fear and fear and nothing else. They are afraid if we don't do this, this will happen. They are afraid if we do that, this will happen. And therefore, they end up opening themselves up for the enemy to bring about an attack. As we conclude, praise the name of the living God. And this is my invitation. And this is how Job ended. Praise the name of the living God. When everything that happened to Job happened to him, in verses 22, the Bible says, Job never charged God because he knew that everything that was happening to him did not come from God. He knew the enemy had incited God against him. And he knew why the enemy had incited God against him. Praise the name of the living God. Glory to God. What I'm saying is this. We can only worship God God's way. We can only worship God the way he has prescribed for us to worship him. The way he has required you to worship him. The enemy will never change who you are. He will never attack who you are. But listen, he will not stop trying. He will not stop trying to attack what you have received from God. Praise the name of the living God. Glory to God. He is a good God. 